My husband and I purchased our home in July of 2015. It was a pre-sale, and from the contract portion to having the keys in our hand, it was about five to six months. We were dropping by a couple of times a week to check on the progress of the house. We met a few of the neighbors and familiarized ourselves with the area. Our house is the corner lot in a private road at the very end of the neighborhood. The entire neighborhood is a dead end. One way in, one way out. Prior to our house being here, it was a vacant lot, which means that people are parked here as we live in the city and parking is regulated. It's dead quiet back here and nothing ever happens. I'm the type of person who's very observant. My husband likes to say I'm the 80 year old, get off my lawn type at the ripe old age of 28. I've never been good with names though. Like I said, parking is regulated so people parking on the side of the house which parallels the main road isn't uncommon. It's all two hour parking. At the time, my husband was working 12 hour shifts and was carpooling so he was being picked up at around 4 in the morning. He had just left and I had heard a vehicle pull up shortly after and I thought maybe he had forgotten something. So I peek out the window and I see a truck parked alongside of our house, facing the wrong direction. This wasn't his ride and I hadn't ever seen this truck out here before. I figured maybe they were waiting to pick someone up for work and left it at that. Over the next 45 minutes to an hour, they continued to sit there, engine off, engine on, engine off, engine on. Headlights off, headlights on. The truck was not parked as I could see that their third brake light was on. It had also come and gone several times. If you're waiting for someone, why leave your engine on for an hour? Why drive back and forth? At this point, I was a little freaked out. It was approaching the time that I needed to leave for work, and I would have to drive right past this truck in order to leave the neighborhood. I didn't know what this person was doing, and I was afraid that maybe they were casing the house in the neighborhood, ours specifically. I texted my husband and he told me that it was weird and if I was worried that I should just call 911. I didn't want to be dramatic, so I got ready and left. I left the living room light on and TV on just in case. We have blinds over all our windows and there's no way to see in. As I leave, I see that the truck is no longer there. I'm relieved. As I'm almost at the end of the neighborhood, I see the truck in another driveway. Now I'm scared. What the fuck is this guy doing? As I drive past the truck, it turns around and heads back to our house. I thought, okay, if I'm going to call, I at least need the license plate number. So I turn around and get what I thought was the make of the truck. It was a Mazda, and I thought it was a Ford. And license plate number, and peel out. I was so scared that I was physically shaking and I stalled my car. As soon as I get out of the main road, I call 911 to report suspicious activity, gave the description, and said that I'd like to be contacted afterward about the outcome. The police station is two streets down, so I knew it would be quick. About 15 minutes later, as I'm pulling into work, I get a phone call from a police officer. He asks if I know a Mary. Nothing comes to mind. I'm bad with names to begin with, but I don't know a Mary. He asks if I'm familiar with the yellow house across the street. I say yes. He tells me that it's Mary's house, and the man in the truck is Mary's ex-boyfriend, and they've been broken up for three years. I believe I said, I'm sorry, but what the fuck is he doing there then? He was watching the house. He had been stalking her. She was not home at the time. The officer told him that his behavior was fucking creepy and not to ever show up again. The officer followed a report and patrolled the area for a few weeks. Even though I didn't know Mary and we had only exchanged waves in passing, it was creepy as hell and she needed to know. I've never seen anyone so freaked out. Apparently, it was not a mutual breakup. He was obsessive and had some dependency issues. She had blocked all communication and this was the last straw in order for her to get a restraining order. For whatever reason, she wasn't granted one earlier. Because our house and street is newer, it doesn't always show on maps or GPS, so we have to give people turn-by-turn -turn directions. When I mapped our house recently, sure enough, the truck is parked in front of Mary's house. So, Mary Stalker? Let's not ever fucking meet. Don't let me catch you in my neighborhood. I was a weird kid and slept with my bedroom lights on all night long. So from the outside, I guess my second floor bedroom was lit up like a display case. I wasn't scared of the dark, just preferred it that way. One night, I awoke to a metal scraping sound outside. 
like something heavy being dragged. I heard a hard thunking noise against the wall outside my window, and then someone climbing up a ladder. I watched, wide-eyed and frozen in fear as a man I'd never seen looked straight at me through my window. Our eyes met and we just looked at each other for a moment. Then I closed my eyes and pretended to sleep, but I was really squinting and watching him. He just stared at me for a few minutes, then I saw a bright camera flash. He climbed back down the ladder and dragged it away. I never saw him again. A year or two later, I was on a road trip with my dad. I think we were in San Diego, a few states away from home. We were staying high up in a hotel room with a balcony on probably the 20th floor or so. My dad and I had our own beds. Mine was nearest the balcony. At some point during the night, a bright flash woke me up, so I opened my eyes and sat up in bed and looked out. Didn't see anything. Then another flash hit me full on, and that's when I saw the outline of a person holding something, a camera apparently, ducked down beyond the edge of the balcony to somewhere below. Again, I was frozen in fear, laid awake most of the night just terrified and staring out of the balcony. I never told anyone and nothing like that ever happened again, but after the second time I had very vivid reoccurring nightmares about being abducted and forced into a child's sex ring and never seeing my family again which in itself is really fucked up since I must have been 8 years old at the time I was never abused and generally had a great childhood. How did I even know that child sex rings were a thing? But I had these dreams, sometimes every week, of being forced to have sex with other children while men watched and recorded us. I don't think my little kid brain even knew how awful that was at the time. The most terrifying thing was that these dreams were only hours long, but they seemed to last for weeks or months at a time and I could remember the other kids' names, and faces, and everything. This happened just last night, and honestly, I'm still a little shaken up over it. I'll try to retell the tale exactly as it happened, but my fear is sure to have fudged the memory up a bit. I work evenings as a dispatcher in a medium-sized midwestern city. I was driving home at 2am when I stopped for gas. In retrospect, it was stupid to have stopped at all. The gas station was poorly lit and completely empty of any other customers, but I knew the shady areas of town, and this was not usually one of them. As I was pumping gas, I noticed a middle-aged black woman sitting on the curb across the parking lot. It was a cold night, and it had just started raining. The woman was not wearing weather-appropriate clothing, so she was drenched. When the woman saw that I was watching her, she called out to me from across the parking lot. My second of many stupid decisions that night was choosing to engage with her. I was worried for her, so I approached her to see what sort of help I could offer. Hi, beautiful. I'm just trying to get home, but no one will help me, she said. I'm trying to get to City A, but the cab ride is $60 and I only have $40. Can you help me? I don't usually give money to panhandlers, but this woman seemed genuine. The weather was terrible and my job centers around helping people, so I agreed. I told her I didn't have any cash, but if she would come in with me inside, I'd take some money out of the ATM and give her a few dollars. But the ATM wasn't working. I apologized and told her there was nothing else I could do for her. She followed me back outside idly chatting with me as I opened my driver's door to get in, and then she got in my car. I was too shocked to really say anything. I sat staring at her as she buckled herself into the passenger seat. As soon as she got into my car, her demeanor changed entirely. She no longer seemed forlorn as much as she did extremely, extremely excited and restless. Just take me to aunt's house. She can give me money, she said. Of course, alarm bells are going off in my head. Although my first instinct is to tell her to get the fuck out of my car, my gut tells me that that would be dangerous. She's already proven to be unpredictable. She seemed to be high, and I didn't know if she had any weapons on her. Forcing her out of my vehicle, I thought, had the potential to elicit a violent reaction. Why are you asking me to take you? I finally said. Just start driving and I'll tell you where to turn. No, if you want me to consider driving you somewhere, I need you to tell me where we're going. I say with no real intention of driving her anywhere. Don't worry, honey. I'm not one of the bad blacks. I'm not going to rob you or nothing. Just drive. No, I repeated. What is your aunt's address? 
Okay, it's on street A. What's the house number? As I was asking her questions, she got really agitated. We still had not left the gas station parking lot. I considered getting out of the car and getting into the gas station for help, but A, she had seemed to know and be friendly with the one attendant that was inside when I tried to get money, and B, I wasn't about to leave her alone in my car. Finally, she snapped at me and said, Why are you asking me so many questions? I thought we were friends. You don't trust me? Is it because I'm black? I work at a police department. It's my job to ask these sort of questions, I said. She flipped the fuck out. She started yelling at me about being a snitch, about trying to get her in trouble, just in general losing her damn mind. At this point, I'm more scared than ever. I just wanted her gone, but my instincts still told me that asking her to get out of my car wouldn't work, so I decided to take a risk. I'm not a police officer, I just work at the police department. Why don't I take you to Walmart and see if they have an ATM that works? My idea was to get her out of the car as peacefully as possible and then lose her in the store. She liked my idea and immediately calmed down. I knew that driving off with this woman in my car was incredibly, incredibly risky, but it seemed like my best option at the time. As we're driving, she keeps talking to me. Her thoughts were erratic, bouncing all over the place. It sometimes seemed difficult for her to follow through one thought, but this is roughly how our conversation went. I'm glad we're friends now. I have about five or six people trying to get me. I'm going to come to your work tomorrow so we can go arrest them together. Okay, we can talk about that tomorrow. Tonight you said you're trying to get home? Yes, honey, I'm trying to get to City B. City B? I thought you said you needed to go to City A. Yeah, yeah, City A. That's what I meant. That's why the cab ride is $40. It's far away. The cab ride is $40? Yeah, baby. You said you have $40. I do, baby. I have $40, but the cab ride is $60. Silence. Are you sure you can't take me to my aunt's house? She lives close by on Street B. I thought you said she lived on Street A. No, baby, I'm at Street B. But it don't matter because she won't give me money anyway. You sure you can't just take me to City A? It was terrifyingly obvious that this woman was utterly full of shit because the details of her story were constantly changing. When we pulled into the Walmart parking lot, she finally got out of my car, only after I got out first, and followed me into the store. I told her before we went in to find an ATM that I needed to use the restroom. My plan was to call the police from inside a stall, but she followed me into the bathroom and that's when things got really weird. She grabbed the crook of my arm and whispered into my ear. If you don't got no money to give me, that's okay. But let me ask you something, sweetie. Do you like getting your pussy ate? I told her no as forcefully as I could manage, bolted into a stall, and locked the door as fast as I could possibly manage. As soon as I had a barrier between us, I said, You know, I have some friends at the police department that can probably help you better than I can. I'm just going to call them and we can figure this out together. Again, at the mention of the cops, she started screaming at me. I just kept reiterating that the police would help her. She snapped at me that she was going to leave and stormed out of the bathroom. But it wasn't over. I waited to make sure she was really gone. Sure enough, not 60 seconds after she left, she came back into the bathroom and started banging on the stall door. And she said something that scared me more than anything else. Hey, come back to your car with me. I left my beer in your car. I blatantly tell her that no. I saw her get into my car and she had absolutely nothing with her other than the clothes on her back. After that, she left the bathroom again and didn't come back. I waited a good five minutes before exiting the bathroom. I immediately found a manager who called the police for me. Thankfully, I was in a different police jurisdiction from the one I work in because I was mortified at how entirely stupid I had been the whole night and would have died of embarrassment if any of my coworkers had responded. The officer that responded took my statement and advised me to be more careful in the future. He said that sometimes panhandlers turn violent, and that just recently there had been a report of a woman who matched my description assaulting a good Samaritan that had stopped to try to help her. I definitely learned a lesson on stranger danger, and I'm lucky to have come out unscathed. I'm glad my stupidity didn't kill me. So Reddit, the next time you try to help a stranger late at night, don't. I was at college one day and had an hour break between classes. 
I decided to take a spot at a huge empty table in a quiet courtyard just outside my next class to catch up on some reading for one of my other courses. A creepy looking guy approached me and asked if he could sit with me. Since there was three other empty tables and no one else around, and the fact that he was asking to sit with me, I thought he might be trying to sell me something. I decided to be polite and said yes. He took the bench right next to me. Our arms were touching. I moved away to get some personal space, and I was for sure creeped out. My radar was going ballistic at this point. As I moved, he grabbed my hand, laced his fingers in mine, and told me to relax. I was so scared, but he had like 100 pounds on me, and I couldn't get my hand away. He started going on about how amazing he was. You couldn't make this shit up, and all this other nonsense. I wasn't 100% paying attention because I was hoping someone would come by and help me. After about 5 minutes of him rambling on, he asks for my phone number. I told him no. He thought I was flirting with him. Then he got upset. I truly believe he would have tried to hurt me too if another student had come by at just the right time and sat down at the table next to us. I got the fuck out of there. Two days later when I came back for that same class, I saw him doing the same thing to another girl. I went up to her and acted like we were best friends and I was coincidentally running into her. I was thankful I got her out of that situation. She told me she was terrified. We went to campus security and reported him. I don't know what ever happened to him, but I never did see him hanging around that area again. This happened to me a few years ago, not too far from my house, and to this day, I still get chills every time I walk down the sidewalk alone. Summer was at an end, and my school was having a planning day, so I stayed home with my older sister. She had a terrible cold with high fever and an ugly cough. It worried me, so I called my mom at her lunch break and asked her what to do. She wouldn't be off at work until 8 in the evening, said she had a meeting right after. So she told me to go to the drugstore and buy some cough medicine and something for the fever. Even though I'm very lazy, I obliged. I just wanted my sister to feel better. I live in the north side of Norway, so it didn't take long before it got darker out. It also rained cats and dogs outside. It had been like that for many days, so it was pretty cold out. I thought to myself that I wouldn't be surprised if I caught a cold as well from this damn weather, but I sucked it up, put on my raincoat and boots, and went out in the rain. The drugstore is about 10 minutes away from my house by foot, which I used 15. I liked to walk slowly back then. Not anymore. I got to the drugstore and bought the stuff I needed without any problems. Only the woman cashier was a bit chatty. I'm not a chatty person and I hate small talk, so it was kind of awkward. I eventually got out of there and began to walk home. I was about halfway there when I noticed a car coming up behind me, very slowly. I could hear the sharp sound of the brakes as it slowed down until it was rolling beside me. I was already cold, but this made me freezing. The car was dark grayish with dimmed windows. It looked expensive enough to make my car crazy sister drool, but I was too scared to care. I just kept walking with the car rolling beside me. The front window closest to me on the passenger side slowly rolled down, and I turned to see a guy in his 20s flashing me a smile. I could barely see the driver and the two others in the back. All guys. It made me want to puke. I quickly looked away. Hey sweetie, where are you headed? Need a lift? His voice made me want to cry. His tone was so sweet and taunting. He wanted to hurt me, I just knew it. What you got in the bag? He asks. I could see his hand in my peripheral vision, reaching out of the car and pointing at my bag. That's when I saw it. Something shiny and sharp in the driver's hand. I didn't even think. I just ran. There was a neighborhood in the opposite side of the road, so I ran past the front of the car, over the road, and into someone's back garden. It was a miracle I didn't get hit, and that they were too shocked to speed up but they soon snap out of it. I could hear loud cussing in the background and the car stopping, then the car door slamming shut. I tucked my bag under my coat so it wouldn't make so much sound and kept running. I didn't think of knocking at any doors because I knew they would get me before anyone could open. I ran zigzag between the houses for them to lose sight of me and looked for somewhere to hide. It worked. I couldn't see them, but I knew they were still after me. I spotted a huge bushy area at a ditch that was pretty steep. I went for it, slid down there like a fucking pro, and crawled inside the biggest, thickest bush I could find. Then I waited. 
It didn't take long for them to show up. I could see their shoes as they paced around me. You let the bitch go! They stood right beside my hiding place. I had to bite down on my coat to stop myself from screaming. How could I know she was crazy enough to run like that? I recognized the voice as the one talking to me in the car. She's fucking fast for being so fat. Shut up! Search over there! They looked everywhere. They even searched through the bush right next to me. I could barely breathe, and my heart beat so hard and fast, I was afraid they would hear it. But they finally gave up after what felt like hours and cussed and yelled some more before they left. I waited there, listening for probably an hour before getting out of my hiding spot and knocking on the first house I saw. The couple living there were so kind to let me stay there and wait for my mom to pick me up after I called her and told her what happened. When we got home, my sister was waiting for us, angry that I took so long. I had a laugh. I never saw that car again, and I never called the police. Since this is Norway, and this area is so quiet, they couldn't do anything else than write a report about it in a file and throw it away. They needed proof, and a name. I couldn't remember their faces, so it was useless. My mom warned the people she knew about the dark grayish car with dim windows. Nothing more could be done. I just had to cope and get over it. By the way, now you know fat chicks can run too, and even from four guys with knives. How's that for a stereotype?